This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Last time we did a video on the French election, Macron was steaming ahead in the polls. He was 10 points ahead of all of the other candidates in both first and second round polling, and The Economist's French election model gave him a 95% chance of winning the election. But over the last few days, Marine Le Pen has been gaining ground, and polling from earlier this week put her within three points of Macron in the second round. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what's gone wrong for Macron, and whether Le Pen could actually end up winning. By the way, if you want daily news updates on issues like the French election and the situation in Ukraine, then you can get a five-minute news summary every day with TLDR's daily briefing. The YouTube channel is linked below, or you can just search for us in your podcast app of choice. Anyway, we're going to split this video into three parts. Firstly, we're going to look at recent polling, including the polling I mentioned from earlier this week. Secondly, we're going to try and explain the reasons behind this sudden shift in polling. And then finally, we're going to ask whether a Le Pen presidency is actually realistic or whether polling is overstating her chances. So let's get into the first bit, the polling itself. Just a month ago, when Putin's invasion of Ukraine was kicking off, Macron was miles ahead in the polls. In early March, Politico's Poll of Polls polling aggregator gave him 30% of the first round votes, 12 points ahead of second place Le Pen, and 18 points ahead of third place Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Then another poll on March 8th gave Macron an astonishing 18-point lead over Le Pen, while another from March 3rd found that his approval rating had jumped 22 points from negative 18 to positive 4. For context, you'd have to go back to Jacques Chirac to find another president who has positive approval ratings at this point in their presidency. So things were clearly looking up for Macron. Today though, while Macron is still the frontrunner, the margins have narrowed somewhat. As the other right-wing candidates like Eric Zemmour and Valérie Pécresse have fallen away, Le Pen has steadily made up ground. In fact, Politico's poll of polls today finds that Macron's lead has halved from 12 to 6 points, giving Macron 27% of the first round vote, while Le Pen has 21%. Le Pen's rise has partially been fueled by the collapse of her right-wing opposition, with Zemmour and Pécresse both falling by about 5 percentage points to 10% of the first round vote, leaving left-wing firebrand Jean-Luc Mélenchon to come through the middle into third place with 15% of the vote. Now, this might not sound too bad for Macron. A six-point lead is, by most politicians' standards, pretty ideal. But while first round polling does look pretty comfortable for him, the second round polling is a little bit closer. For those of you who don't know, the French election is split into two rounds. The first round is between all candidates, and the second round is a head-to-head -head between the top two candidates from the first round. And currently, Le Pen and Macron are the most likely to make it to the second round. A month or so ago, head-to-head -head polling gave Macron a 10-point lead over Le Pen in this hypothetical second-round matchup, with Macron expected to win 55-45. to 45. Unfortunately for Macron, though, recent polling suggests that his lead has narrowed significantly. Two polls on Monday found that Macron would only win by 6 points, 53-47, to 47, while a poll on Tuesday found that Macron had just a 3 percentage point lead over Le Pen, at 51.5% to Le Pen's 48.5. Anyway, you get the idea. Macron's lead over Le Pen is getting dangerously narrow, and this leads us on to the second part of the video. How did this happen? Well, as we see it, there are two main reasons for this change, and the first is Ukraine. Back when the war first started, Macron clearly looked like the leader of Europe. That's because Merkel was now out of the picture, France has the biggest military in the EU, and Macron was one of very few leaders still in regular contact with Putin. But as time's gone on, the French electorate have turned their attention back to domestic matters, and Macron's endless phone calls with Putin look increasingly pointless, at least electorally. 
Secondly though, Le Pen has successfully been able to detoxify her brand. Le Pen has been trying for the best part of a decade to bring the National Rally, formerly National Front, into the mainstream and throw off some of their far-right links. This election though is the closest she's come to achieving this, and that's for a couple of reasons. First is someone who's not even in her party though, Eric Zemmour. By positioning himself as even further right than Le Pen, Zemmour has made Le Pen's policies look relatively moderate by comparison. Secondly, in the last few weeks, Le Pen has shifted her focus away from immigration and towards the cost of living. Like most of the world, France is suffering from a bit of an inflation shock at the moment. And the latest inflation data from March puts year-on-year -year inflation at a 20-year high of 5% mostly driven by increases in food and fuel prices. Now, it's worth saying that this is lower than its European counterparts. The UK inflation rate is about 6%, Germany's is 7 Spain's 10 and the Netherlands 12 So while it's bad for France, it's not as bad as it could be. And that's largely thanks to the fact that French energy is nationalised, which means that the French state has been able to limit annual domestic energy price rises to 4%. Nonetheless, a 5% inflation rise is still the highest inflation rate the French have seen in two decades. And as such, Le Pen has promised to spend 68 billion euros putting money back into French pockets. Her proposed measures include income tax exemptions for under 30s and VAT cuts on petrol. Macron, who only plans on spending 25 billion euros, has accused Le Pen of being fiscally irresponsible. But Le Pen says that she'll pay for these measures with savings, including removing benefits from non-French citizens. It's also worth saying that Macron's plan to increase the pension age from 62 to 65 has not gone down well. And in response to this, Le Pen has instead promised to actually cut the pension age from 62 to 60 for anyone who started work before the age of 20. So those are the two major reasons we've seen a shift here. The decreasing relevancy of Ukraine and foreign policy in this election, and Le Pen's successful detoxification. But on to the third and final part of this video. Does this mean that we should expect to see a Le Pen victory? Well, just take a look at the polling, and it's obviously significantly more likely than it looked before. But most analysts still think that a Le Pen victory is pretty unlikely. For starters, Le Pen regularly polled at 40% in the run-up to the 2017 election, and ended up getting just 33% in the second round. Furthermore, Le Pen has a pretty strict ceiling on her vote share. A massive poll by Ipsos Mori found that 50% of French voters said that they would never vote for Le Pen, whereas just 38.5% said that they'd never vote for Macron. It's therefore pretty hard to win a majoritarian election when 50% of the electorate say that they would never vote for you. You get the idea though. While her poll ratings have improved, there are reasons to be skeptical of Le Pen's prospects. In the end though, the result will depend on a whole load of yet unknown variables. Whether inflation continues to pick up, how candidates perform in the debates, and perhaps most importantly, whether Macron can successfully convince left-leaning voters, who ordinarily aren't that keen on his centrist approach, to go out and vote for him against Le Pen in the second round of voting. We don't know the answers to any of those questions today. We do know things are changing though, and you can find out more as it happens by subscribing to The Daily Briefing. This video though was brought to you by Brilliant, the STEM learning platform that turns complex subjects into fun and interactive experiences. I did a computer science degree, and I've loved exploring Brilliant to refresh my skills, as well as learning new ones to help with my current job, like their superb statistics courses. But you don't need any kind of background in STEM. If you just want to spend a bit of time building your skills, then you can do it right away with no long, boring lectures like the ones I had to sit through. Sorry to my former university. Instead, you can learn through interactive games and puzzles, the kind of thing you actually want to do. There's something at all levels too, with more advanced courses on things like neural networks and even quantum computing. Just pick a course that you're interested in and get started. They're all designed by award-winning instructors and built upon the principle of active learning. So you're gaining STEM knowledge by actually doing it. 
Brilliant helps you learn new things and sharpen your skills. So if you want to improve with STEM, then you should sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDR EU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks so much for supporting the channel.